Welcome back to Slingham Badger How to Play. Today we're learning three more games from the Viking Age. Hey guys, so continuing our ancient games theme, today we're going to be talking about three Toffel games from the Viking Age. The first is called Brando. And just so you know, my pronunciation on these games is probably way off. But the first is Brando, which is all kind of like an Irish chess kind of game. The second one is Nefetoffel. Probably the most popular version found in ancient Scandinavia. And then the third version is called Tableau, which was played by the Sami tribes also in Scandinavia, kind of those, those peoples over there. Uh, the reason I say Tableau for last, not Nefetoffel, is because the rules have kind of been moved around over the years. But Tableau, the reason why it's important is because um, they actually found the rules for Tablut written down. Someone around the 18th century actually wrote them down in a book, so we actually have them. And by um, reverse engineering the Tablut rules with uh, recovered uh, boards for Nefetalfo and Brando, they were able to reconstruct the rules. And the rules I'm going to tell you today are kind of the generally accepted rules for these games. So, let me show you how to play. All right, so here is an up close look at these three games. And knowing absolutely nothing about the game, you can probably already see some similarities. They all have a symbol in the middle and symbols in the corners. Now, if you notice, the main difference with, between these boards is how many squares there are. Brando is a seven by seven board. Tablet is a nine by nine. And the most commonly used Nefetoffel board is an 11 by 11. Now the rules for these games are pretty much the same. So the main difference will be the layout. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so here's the brand to play As you see, you got eight attackers. There are these darker ones around the outside and four defenders. There are these lighter ones on the inside. And you got one king in the middle that the defenders are trying to protect. Uh, the king is usually taller than all their other pieces to distinguish his station. So that's the Brandup layout. Here's the tablet layout with 16 attackers, eight defenders, and the king. A little bit different layout, but you'll notice with all three of these games, there's always twice as many attackers as there are defenders. And here's a Nefetoffel layout with 24 attackers, 12 defenders and the king. So there you go, there's the main layouts. Now, the purpose of the game is for the attackers to capture the king and the defenders are trying to get the king to escape. So let me show you how this game goes. So let's start at the beginning. The king and his men go second. The attackers go first. Now every piece in this game moves just like a rook in chess. Straight lines either on a row or a column, but no diagonals. So we'll have this guy right here move up here and then the, then the defenders go we'll have this guy move forward you keep going like this until you're able to trap somebody so this guy moves up here you trap a piece by having them caught between two of your own so right here you got this guy caught between these two attackers remove him from the game now it's the white guy's turn. Let's say the defender wants to move there. That is a legal move. You can move between two opposing pieces and be safe. They have to make the move to encircle you in order to capture you. So let's remove some pieces from the game, pretend we're a bit farther in the game. So we can talk about kind of later gameplay. Okay. So let's say we're at 
this point in the game. More or less pretty fair, I think, late, late in the game. The king right here, he has to try and get to an edge in order to escape. So if he comes out here, this guy might move over to stop him. He might come down right there, and then he'll just go that way and win. That was a bad example. Let's put that guy there. So let's say it's like this. He tries to move so the king can get over. He comes down. Now the king's starting to get in trouble because he's getting closed in. And that's kind of the point of this game is to try and capture the king. Now, the way you capture the king is that you have to have him encircled on all four sides on the board. And that is one of the rules that's kind of in contention. Many people think that the king only has to be encircled by all four if he's in the center spot and two if he's out on the board. But that rule, some of the historians who are the experts on this game, thinks makes the king feel limited. Makes the king more of a defensive player. When the king requires four to be trapped, he's more likely to go and make mistakes and actually leave what they call the throne, that center spot. Uh, no other place uh, pieces can end their turn on that spot. And no other piece can also go in the corners. Those are called king squares. The king's the only one he can go to. Them. And in most versions of the rule, once the king leaves that center spot, he can't go back. Now, one rule that is common is if the king, on his next turn, can make it to an edge square, he's supposed to say, check. Just like in chess, kind of let the other player know, I'm going to win next turn. So the other player, if they're not paying attention, can save themselves. That's just kind of one of those rules that's out there. Uh, a couple of ways for the game to end are, of course, if the attackers manage to surround the king. Uh, if the attackers can completely encircle, completely encircle the defenders, that's another way, supposedly, that they can win. So right there, the defenders are completely encircled around. There's no breaks. So at this point, they would just keep moving in and game's over. And while I'm in this position, you can do a double move. So if you move forward here, this piece and this piece are both entrapped by pieces, they can be removed. So I know this is a very confusing game, but it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. Just keep going and keep playing. Uh, another way this game can end is if you get caught in repetitive moves. If you guys got the, if the attackers have the king trapped and he keeps having to go back and forth between two moves and that's the only thing he can do, then that's considered a loss. That's, there are basically no ties in this game. If there's a tie, the attackers win. And I think that's pretty much all you need to know in order to play these three games. Now, apart from the piece count, all three of these games are the same. The rules are pretty much the same across the board. The only difference is usually in brand up, since there's so few pieces, the king can be captured with just two pieces. And uh, that's about it. And there you guys have it. Three Toffle games from the Viking Age. I know the rules are kind of confusing. I went through them very quick. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you have questions about what kind of year these games are from, what they're made of, anything, ask. And if I don't know, I will research and get back to you. I will, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, the two games, the Brand Up and the Tablet, those are two boards that we designed Kind of made here. The Nefetalful board is one we did not design. We got that from somebody else. It's a very nice game, but we're working on creating a new one. So, if a lot of people are confused by how we describe the rules in this video, we'll post a new video with that board. We'll hope and we'll answer any questions or clear up anything that we missed in this video. Um, if you guys want to see more videos and learn more games, like and subscribe down below. We do laser cutting, engraving, 3D printing, jam, games, all sorts of stuff on this channel. 
and we have very soon coming up more ancient games. So please like, subscribe, and join us, and have a nice day.